Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Pro Wrestling History Today. Your five-minute rundown of all the professional wrestling, birthdays, deaths, and top moments for this day in pro wrestling history. I'm your host, the eclectic gentleman, Stefan Watts, reminding you to like, share, and subscribe, and comment below on what moment in history was your favorite today. Now, without further ado, put five minutes on the clock, and away we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is September 29th, and we're going to start off as we always do on a positive note. That's right. These are your pro wrestling birthdays. 1934, the villainous manager of the 70s and 80s, Skandar Akbar. 1960, second generation wrestler, David San Martino. 1971, puppies, puppies, puppies. It's Stacy. Cat Carter. 1985, the mama of the way, Candace LeRae. And last but not least, 1988, former Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion, Roosh. Jumping straight into your highlights for September 29th, 1971, the WWWF hold their first taping at their new home at the Fieldhouse in Hamburg, Pennsylvania, a place they would do weekly tapings at for many, many years. Jumping ahead eight years to 1979, WWF Intercontinental Champion Pat Patterson nearly beats and wins the WWF world title off of Bob Backlund when Patterson knocks the champ out with a pair of brass knucks, only for Backlund's manager, Arnold Skolan, to break up the pin, disqualifying Backlund. Jumping into the 80s, 1985, the longest tag team title reign of the Road Warriors career comes to an end at a year and a half when they lose the AWA World Tag Team titles to Jim Garvin and Steve Regal. Staying in 1985, after Ric Flair successfully retains his World Heavyweight title against Nikita Koloff in a steel cage match, Crusher Khrushchev and Ivan and Nikita jump Flair beating him down until Dusty Rhodes makes the save, clearing the cage of the Russians. Only to have Ole and Arn Anderson come to the cage and beat down Rhodes, with Flair joining in, eventually coming down from the top rope onto Dusty's leg, breaking it, in one of the most memorable moments in 1980s wrestling. Two years later in 1987, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard win the NWA World Tag Team titles beating the Rock and Roll Express with an assist from James E. Cornett and the Midnight Express who jumped the Rock and Roll pre-match. Fast forwarding to the 90s, 1991, Slick made his final appearance for the WWF for over a year at a TV taping in Wheeling, West Virginia, when Davy Boy Smith power slams him through the ring. No, just power slams him and does an injury angle. When Slick returns a year later, he is now a babyface, dubbed Reverend Slick. Two years later, in 1993, the Rock and Roll Express make their WWF debut in a losing effort against Well Done. This is part of the Smoky Mountain Wrestling talent exchange with the WWF. Making a huge leap into the 2000s, 2008, it is announced that Ric Flair's robe that he wore in his retirement match against Shawn Michaels at Mania 24 would be put on display at the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. And last but not least, staying in 2008, My Network TV announces it has signed a two-year deal with the WWE to air SmackDown. Those were your short but sweet pro wrestling history highlights for September 29th. I'm the eclectic gentleman, Stefan Watts. And we'll see you tomorrow.